Hey gang, Craig Ripley here, and it's time once again to give you an update on that mouthful of a motorcycle, the 2023 Triumph Tiger 1200 GT Explorer. Now I now have 11,170 miles or thereabouts on the motorcycle and I've had the chance to get the bike up to the dealer and have them do the scheduled 10,000 mile service. So I'm now going to be able to give you an update on the reliability as well as the cost, that is the cost of ownership for this motorcycle. Now, I know a lot of people wanted to know about those two things, the reliability and cost of ownership, but before I get into that, let me talk about the things that I have already covered in some other videos, because I don't want to repeat myself you know, during this video as well. So I've created a playlist with all of the videos that I've done so far on the Triumph Tiger, and those include me picking up the motorcycle, they include my initial impressions, a 3,000 mile review, a 7,000 mile review, a discussion of how the bike compares to my old Yamaha Super Tenere, as well as I covered a little oil leak that I had with the bike. So you can go back and look at all of those things if you want to get more detail on comfort and performance and all of those things, because they really haven't changed a whole lot. Now first let's talk about my overall impressions and the reliability of the motorcycle, at least up to this point. I've now had it for almost a full year and as I said I put over 11,000 miles on the bike. And so far I am still loving this motorcycle and enjoying it every time I go out on it. Reliability wise, the bike has been rock solid. I have had basically no problems with the bike whatsoever, except for that minor oil leak that I was having from the oil filler cap, and that took a 25 cent O-ring to repair it. Now the only other issue that I know of that other riders are having is that some people are having a little bit of trouble with the clutch. So. Triumph has issued a service bulletin to have all of these bikes have the hydraulic clutch bled, and I had that done on this last service, but again, I haven't been having any problems with it. I did talk to one other rider who was up at Mom's a couple of weeks ago, has the exact same bike that I have, and he's been in about five or six times to have his clutch worked on. They just kept bleeding it and trying to find the problem, and finally they ended up replacing the slave cylinder uh, for the clutch. So hopefully that will uh, solve his problem and he won't have to go back again. But as I said, I haven't had any problem with the clutch whatsoever. One thing I was asked to cover in this 10,000 mile review was that if I would take this bike on some of the other adventures that I've gone out on, like would I ride it to Alaska or would I take it out on a 60 or 65 day trip? And so far I have to say yes, absolutely I would. I rode my Super Tenere to Alaska, again I was very comfortable doing that, and I think I would be very comfortable on this bike as well. I have changed, of course. I'm a little bit older. I need to stop a little bit more often, do some stretching. But other than that, the bike does really, really well. And I don't think I would hesitate on taking it on a trip that was going to be 60 or 65 days in length either. In fact, maybe we'll check into doing that here in the near future. Now another thing to be concerned about when you're going on a long trip is of course going to be service. Can I get the bike serviced if I need it? And of course having a bike like a Triumph, a Ducati, or even a BMW, that is always going to be a concern because there aren't a whole lot of dealers here in the United States. I believe both Triumph and BMW has somewhere around that 150 to 180 dealers. I know that's the goal that they were working towards the last I heard. So they're going to be in larger cities and you're going to have to kind of figure out where those are if you need service during your trip and make sure that you get over there. But again, we had to do that when I had the BMW as well. I had to look at going to Vegas or to Riverside or to Long Beach or to some of the other places that we were going to be hitting along the way. It's just the way that it is. 
Now another thing that I was asked to cover are the accessories that I purchased with this bike and whether or not that I'm happy with them. And the only thing that I did purchase when I got the bike are the panniers, the hard cases, as well as the top case. And there's a floating uh, receiver, a floating rack that you have to get for the top case. So all of that together came to about $2,500 when I initially bought the motorcycle. And so far, those cases have worked great. I'm very happy with them. Uh, they seal well. I, again, haven't gotten any water inside them, anything like that. So, again, they've been very good. They are Triumph branded bags. They are made by GV. Now, I will say that the latching mechanisms have been a little bit funky on occasion, so you do have to fiddle with them. But other than that, again, they've worked great. I really have not much complaint for that at all. So now let's get to the cost of ownership on this bike. Now the original purchase price, once I added all of those bags, was about $25,500. Not a cheap motorcycle. It's about in the same price range as other bikes in the category and size. The BMWs, the Ducatis, the KTMs. The only thing that's really any cheaper are going to be things like the Honda Africa Twin and the Yamaha Super Tenere. So if you're looking for a deal, well, those are the bikes to go with. But if you're looking for something that has all of the extra horsepower and all of the gadgets that come along with a modern adventure touring bike, well, something like the BMW GS or this Triumph Tiger 1200, that's what you're looking at for price, around that $25,000 price point. So after purchasing the bike, the first time I had to spend any money on it was of course at the 600 mile service. And that service ran about $375. I know that sounds like a lot of money, but it's pretty standard for his first service nowadays. And my BMW's first service costs about $100 more than that. So that brings us to the 10,000 mile service. And the primary thing that needs to be done during that service is to change the engine oil and the final drive oil. And those are two things that I decided to do myself. I didn't want to leave those up to the dealer. And that's because I was leaving on a trip right at that 10,000 mile point. My service wasn't scheduled until I got home. So I wanted it to have fresh oil before I left on the trip. Also, I wanted to know how to do those changes because I plan on doing them in the future. And also, I wanted to see the condition of the oil when I changed it. Because I've had a lot of people who were just freaked out by a 10,000 mile service interval on this motorcycle. And let me tell you, I was pretty impressed with the condition of the oil when I changed it. I've changed my Victory Vision oil, which is a semi-synthetic oil, right, at 2,500 miles every oil change, and it was always just black and filthy. I also changed the Yamaha Super Tenere's oil at 4,000 miles, and it was always dark and dirty as well. But this oil was a lot lighter in color and didn't seem to be as dirty. So I was really impressed with the Castrol oil that they put in this motorcycle, and it looks like it could very easily do these 10,000 mile service intervals. Even though I know that we all grew up doing 3,000 mile intervals on our oil changes, right? engine build quality gets better, tolerances get better, motor oil quality gets better as well. And now pretty much all of our modern engines, whether they're in cars or motorcycles, have those extended service intervals on them and they use this synthetic oil which doesn't break down as quickly. Now with that said, what am I going to do in the future? Well, I'll probably change it more often than every 10,000 miles. I'll probably start changing it about every 6,000 miles. So that will give me an extra oil change okay, in between those long service intervals. And I'll do that for just peace of mind and again because I'll be doing it. And then I'll kind of be, my oil changes was, will be off the major service intervals and then I can tell the dealer that I already did it, you don't need to touch it, 
and I'll save myself a little bit of money. All right, so I changed my own oil, I changed the final dry fluid, but I still had to take the bike in and have them put it on the computer, make sure that it didn't need any updates, everything was running properly, and go through and do their safety checks and so forth. And also reset the maintenance warning light, right? So when I did, I took that in, and here I've got a few notes here. Uh, the 10K service, it took 1.4 hours to do, and that came to $224.19. And again, my dealer's hourly rate is $160 an hour. So here are the things that were done during this 10,000 mile service. First of all, they have a series of safety checks that they go through and they do. Then they top off the coolant, they set the tire pressure, inspect the brakes, they check the final drive oil level, again, which I had already changed. They lubed pivot points, replaced the key fob battery, and they seem to do that every time that you take it in for service. It costs you seven bucks for a new battery every time, but I guess that's probably a good idea to do it once a year. All right. And then they put it on the computer and they did their auto scan on it. Now on my bike, they also found that I needed front brakes, which I guess even at 10,000 miles, I'm not that surprised because I do a lot of trail braking, right? I really do use that front brake a lot. So that, uh, they had to get two sets of pads, of course, at $43.56 a piece. And then it was $127.20 in labor, eight tenths of an hour to replace the pads. All right, so total cost on my 10,000 mile service then was $480.89 with tax. All right now, if I had let them do the oil and the final dry fluid, then it would probably cost another $200 to $250 because the oil alone on this bike is just under $20 a quart, but $18 a quart you need four and a little bit more to fill the engine. So you're going to end up spending, again, about $500 or so on this 10,000-mile uh, service. So right now I can hear your wheels turning. You're just anxious to get on the keyboard and tell me how excessive that price is for a 10,000-mile service. But I'm going to remind you of a couple things. One, we're in Massachusetts, we're up here in the Northeast, so we're paying that Boston area pricing. As I said, my dealer is $160 an hour for the service. Right. And also, I want to remind you that uh, this is about what other dealers charge for the same kind of a service. Right. I, in fact, I checked. There are two big Triumph dealers here in my area, and that's one, Moms and their chain of stores. They now have like a dozen of them around the Northeast. Uh, they're a big Triumph dealer, and the other one is National Power Sports, and they are up in the New Hampshire area. Well, I called National Power Sports, and I asked them uh, what their price for the 10,000-mile service was, and they said $475, which is the exact same thing that mom's charges for the 10,000 mile service. I did, however, go in and ask moms to give me a quote on the 20,000 mile service that will be coming up, well, probably in less than a year for me at the rate that I'm going. And during that service, that is when you check the valves and set them if necessary. So mom's is quoting that as a 10 hour service and they gave me a price of $1,935 for that service. Yeah, I know, that's a lot of money. So I asked National Power Sports about what that would be, and they gave me a quote of $1,300. So I honestly don't know what the discrepancy is between those two prices. I don't know if Moms is doing more or if it's just labor price charges from Massachusetts to New Hampshire. I'm going to have to look into it a little bit more. Like I said, I have probably about a year or so before I need to have that service done. And so I'll figure out where I'm going to be taking it. Moms has always treated me well. I'm sure they're going to continue to treat me well. And they're right around the corner from me. 
If I take it to National Power Sports, well, they're up in New Hampshire. Right, so I've got an hour and a half ride up there, an hour and a half ride back, and then I go got to go get the bike again after I've dropped it off. So I could have as much as six hours of riding time uh, to save myself 600 bucks. Is that worth it? I don't know. I'll have to think about it, right? So along with looking at the comparison between those two rates of service for the two dealers, I also wanted to look at how much it costs me for my other motorcycles and what this bike is going to cost me in comparison. So I have my BMW K1600 that I had for three years and I went through a full range of service. I put almost 23,000 miles on that bike before I sold it. And also I have a Yamaha Super Tenere that again I had for about the same period of time and I put roughly the same amount of miles on the bike again before I sold it. So I decided we're going to take a look at all of the dealer recommended service intervals for these three motorcycles, the BMW, the Yamaha, and now the Tiger. And we're going to add all of those things up and see what comes out most expensive, right? And what's the least expensive, right, to maintain. Now I did try to adjust all of these prices for inflation because we have had a little bit of it over the past few years, right? And I had some of these services done back in 2015 and 2019 and so forth. So I went out and I looked up the rate of inflation for all of those years to now and I adjusted things accordingly. Again, because I want to make sure that we are looking at apples and apples here. Now, of course, I know if you do these things at home, you can save yourself money. Right? That's a given. Right? We just want to look at what the manufacturer recommends and if you had this work done at the dealer. And I figure that's going to give us the best idea on which bike is going to cost the most to maintain. So let's look first at the BMW. All right, so my first service on the BMW, again, adjusted for inflation, was $511, right? Then you have to change the oil and have the bike serviced every 6,000 miles, right? And that cost me roughly $727 every 6,000 miles that I had that bike serviced. So I did that at 6 at, and at 12. Then at 18,000 miles, that is the big one on the BMW. That's the valve service, and that service ran about $2,300, again, adjusted for inflation. Then after that, we got a 24,000-mile service, again, $727. So a total for all of that is $4,267, again, to maintain the BMW, not counting tires. I was going through tires on that bike every 6,000 miles, so instead of being $700, it was actually closer to $1,700 every 6,000 miles. So next, let's look at the Yamaha Super Tenere. Now, it has a shorter service interval. The BMW was 6,000. It was 4,000 miles. Change the oil, and then you had to change the final drive oil every 8,000 miles. So my first service, again adjusted for inflation for the Yamaha, was $367. And then at 4K, again taking it to the dealer to have this done in the oil, ran about $450, again adjusted for inflation. So you got to do that at 4, at 8, at 12, at 16, at 20, and at 24. All right, so it's 450 bucks at all of those intervals. And then at 26,000 miles, that is when you had the valve check done on the Yamaha, and that runs about $1,200. So now the total for all of that is less than the BMW at $3,817. So now let's look at the Triumph Tiger 1200. It has a service interval of 10,000 miles. You have to do the valve check every 20,000 miles. Now its first service costs $375, as we've already talked about. Its 10K service, $475, again, if you're having the oil and so forth change there. And then its 20K service, 
Moms is saying is $1,935. So a total for those three services that you would need done right, over this time period would be $2,785. So now what I decided to do when I made this chart up is I wanted to take the bike through their valve check interval. So all of these bikes, I ran out to that 26,000 mile level because that's where Yamaha had the valve check done and that was the longest of the service intervals. But again, you have to have more oil changes done in the interim. So those all add up. So I was actually really surprised when I made up this chart. I, I was expecting that the BMW would be leading the pack, which it, it is. I was expecting the Triumph to be in the middle, and I was expecting the Yamaha to be cheapest. But again, if you're going to the dealer and you're having these oil changes done every 4,000 miles, that is going to add up. Now, I never did that, right? I did the oil changes at home, and I only took the bike in once a year to have them do a safety check or what have you. And that was usually when I had tires changed right before a long trip. So it didn't cost me that much, right? But again, I'm comparing apples to apples here. So we want to look at if you took this bike in, all three of these bikes, into the dealer, what's it going to cost you? And the Triumph um, is, well, it's the cheapest. Now, of course, saying that the Triumph is cheap is, well, not true. They're all expensive, right? All of these bikes cost quite a bit to maintain. Pretty much any modern motorcycle is going to cost a lot to maintain. And as we've already said, of course, if you do the work yourself, you can definitely save some money. For me, you know, I'll do my oil changes. I'll do the final drive oil change. I'll do other fluids. I'll change the brakes even though I didn't do them on this particular occasion. So I'll do all of those things as, as much as I possibly can, but there does become a point when I don't want to deal with it. And this is just me personally. Right? Like taking the bike in and having the valve checks done, now I'm going to let the pros do that. I have no desire to go out and buy the tools necessary or spend the time necessary to disassemble this motorcycle because I understand it's quite a process just to take it apart. It's, you know, you can spend an hour of time just doing that. So I would rather let them do it. I'll just pay them. That's the one thing that uh, I just have no interest in doing. So summing all of this up, the bike has been great over this first year. It has been extremely reliable. I've had no problems with it whatsoever. But again, other than an oil leak and it really wasn't a big deal. Right, so I'm really happy with the motorcycle. I'm happy with the way it rides. I'm happy with the way it handles. Um, I think it looks great. It sounds great. Again, I just really like this motorcycle. Now, as far as the cost go, well, as I just talked about, every modern motorcycle is gonna cost you some kind of money. None of these things are cheap, and it'll just depend upon how much you wanna spend yourself, how much you wanna do yourself, All right? So um, I'm looking forward to a lot of additional miles that I'm gonna be putting on this bike. And um, I'm hoping that they're all gonna continue to be as uh, problem-free as they have been in the past. So I'll let you know uh, what happens in the future. Uh, of course, just keep watching this channel. All right, ride safe, my friends.